Hi, I'm Bob Rubart with the Oracle Technology Network, and my guest today is Farhan Ahmad. Farhan is an application developer and analyst at Mohawk College in Ontario, Canada, and he's the winner of the Oracle Java Microservices Hackathon held in Toronto in August just a few weeks ago. How are you, Farhan? I'm good. How are you, Bob? I'm good, thanks. So tell me about this hackathon. What was the objective of this hackathon? So I, I sort of uh, approached it because I was uh, sort of interested in uh, microservices. We were doing a lot of Java development uh, at Mohawk, and uh, I was interested to see sort of how, you know, there, there was a little bit of Node as well that we were focusing on. So I approached it more from a how is Node and Java microservices supposed to work together and specifically how that's supposed to help us in sort of enterprise architecture and, and service-oriented architecture and how that is different from your traditional uh, service-oriented architecture. What was the specific challenge that you were assigned as part of this hackathon? What were you expected to do? So one of the things that we did was uh, we set up, uh, we used the Oracle Cloud so to me, that was a new experience altogether. I wasn't really expecting that at all. Um, and that was a great learning opportunity. You know, I came from the AWS and uh, Microsoft Azure side of things. And then seeing how Oracle sort of blends in and, and you know, allows us to work with microservices and make deploying microservices much easier on the Oracle Cloud. So that was a, a very informative session for me. And I really liked how we, we sort of did a uh, sort of like a lecture and then a hands-on sort of approach to the hackathon, which is very different from your traditional hackathons that I've been to in the past. Did that spur your interest? You know, I mean, was that, that lecture portion of the, the event? That yeah, it was definitely interesting. Um, it was different because uh, I haven't really been to a lot of hackathons that sort of take that approach. They sort of, you know, let you loose and say go wild. Mm -hmm. But this one was a little bit more structured. So there was more, you know, there was a lecture part where you actually learned something. And then you were you would take away from that and sort of take what you did and learn from that lecture and apply that directly in, in whatever it is you're trying to hack. Were you working solo or as part of a team? So uh, we, so I sort of, I went with a colleague of mine uh, from Mohawk as well, and so we were both sort of sitting together and sort of working together. But at at the end of the day, we both were working on our own little oh. project. Okay. So we were sort of helping each other, you know, in and out. So what were the parameters that were set up as part of this? What were you? What sort of instructions were you given? So we were given very sort of uh, like a like more or less lab assignment uh, where it was step by step and sort of it guided you through the basics of how the Oracle Cloud works and it gave us a sample project to work with so I really like that um, and then we sort of were supposed to take that and build on top of it and so it's not like we were starting from scratch we were actually given some working code and it did something and then basically once the whole class the lab session once everybody had that sample project working we were at we went off and started building our own little thing and then and then built on top of that. Other than this sort of preparation part that started the, the, the day off, you kind of came into the, the hackathon part cold in terms of what you were going to build on top of what you built as part of the initial exercise. That's right, yeah. That was that was new for me. I didn't really expect that. I was expecting sort of, sort of just jump in and start coding and build something out of the box. But because we had that lecture and lab approach, it really sort of guided us through the process and, and allowed us to sort of use what we learned through the labs and hands-on exercises and then sort of build on top. So from a creative standpoint, was that tougher than other hackathons you'd participated in? For me, it was personally, I think it was a little easier. Okay. Because it sort of got us got the ball rolling and, and you know everybody was sort of had a working pro project before they actually dived in and started doing their own thing so it was it, it was def uh, you know the beginning part was definitely easier um, I didn't really to be honest with you I didn't really know what I was gonna build when I went in until you know everybody started working on their their labs and exercising and from that I was like okay well you know that would be a great idea so let's do that you know and, and so it basically you know I the, the idea of what I wanted to build sort of came on the spot Okay. As you know, we were we were building and and working on the lab, so that was really interesting. Yeah. So once that happened, once you had that spark of an idea, how long did it take you to actually complete the project? Um, not long to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> Um, cause again, most of the, the server side component was already built. That was sort of what the lab focused on. 
And so I, do, I only had to build the front end of the application, and the front end could have been anything. And so I basically I took whatever technology I was most comfortable with, something that, you know, I, I decided to use uh, Ionic. So that's a very quick sort of uh, rapid prototyping framework. It's very quick. So I basically, you know, I was able to punch it, you know, build an app within, you know, an hour and a half. And it was a fully functional app that you could present to somebody and say, wow, this is a pretty cool app. So it, 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 was, it didn't really take me long once I had the, the baseline code configured and working. Which Oracle cloud services did you work with? So uh, we mostly worked with the, just your, your traditional Java application that we deploy. And we sort of set up uh, sort of a, a bit of build automation as well. And it was attached to our Git repository. And, and, and I really liked how they provided us with the Git repository and everything. So it was all ready to go. We just had to go in and commit our changes. And then, you know, the way the lab was structured, it was basically the build automation was it was it was the process of setting up build automation using the, the Oracle Cloud. And, and, and that mixed together with our development workflow was just perfect. You know, we just commit our changes and it, it automatically built and compiled and deployed the application. So that that was a pretty cool experience. Then. That was a pretty cool experience. Yes. Right. You mentioned that you've done a lot of hackathons in the past. What do you take from this one to the next one? So, I, <laughs> every hackathon is different. Yeah. Um, the ones that I went to weren't really this big of a scale. It was they were more sort of you know your simple hack, you know junkies that sort of get together and, and just code for fun, right? Okay. This one was a little bit more structured. There was there was a proper company backing it you know it's not you know it wasn't just a room full of coders and just coding away so it was definitely more structured um what i could maybe take away from it would probably be sort of the organization of how it's done maybe you know prepping uh, beforehand to, to see what you might want to potentially build and be ready to build that um that would probably be one of the biggest things that I would take away from that. What advice would you give to people who are thinking about entering one of these hackathons? Um, what advice would I give? Uh, honestly, just show up. Like that's that's, <laughs> that's really what it is. Easy it, enough. It's it's really if you're if you're interested in learning uh, something new, uh, something that you haven't done before, uh, it's it's definitely you know like a, a very great learning opportunity and you just you don't have to really go in with the attitude that you want to build something you mm -hmm. can just go in as a, as a learning opportunity and eventually while you're there depending on how the labs and exercises are built they'll sort of guide you through what you should build and that's really what I found personally when I went to this particular hackathon it was it was very well structured and it sort of it didn't really take a lot of planning on my end it just showed up and it you know, it, the the end result sort of just happened. What attracted you to this hackathon? Again, it was the 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 microservices uh, approach and sort of seeing how that's different from service oriented architecture because that's been sort of picking up recently a lot right. with a lot of the startup world, I guess you want to call it, where they're sort of building service oriented architecture and then they're building your apps on top of that, just so it's it's scalable and it's easier to work with down the road. Um, so I was really interested in seeing how, you know, microservices sort of play in that role. And then uh, there was some talk about Node.js, so I, I was sort of interested to see how Node and, and microservices sort of work together. Yeah. Node, I'm, I'm still fairly new to as well, so that's a new technology on its own that I'm very interested in. So I was very interested to see how they sort of play along and work together. What are you working on in your, in your real life, away from hackathons? What are you doing that's interesting? What am I doing these days? What, well, that, you, that you can talk about. <laughs> that I can talk about. Well, it's not confidential. I, I, I work at Mohawk College, and uh, I'm an internal, basically an internal application developer. So any of the internal col applications, college applications that we have, uh, we sort of support and maintain. So our, our role is sort of split 50-50 between support and, and, uh, and custom development. Okay. Um, so any of this, so any of the applications that sort of integrate with the college's ERP system, for example, those we would directly work with. Uh, we've got quite a few applications that we're building in Groovy Grails, which is a very, very sort of a very new technology picking up in the enterprise space. Uh, so we're doing a lot of work with that. Um, we've got some legacy .NET PL SQL stuff that we're sort of migrating off of. Um, we have. 
uh, some PHP applications, uh, some .NET. We've got to really make a good mix of everything, really. And again, because we're a support and development uh, role, we sort of have to, you know, dive in every once in a while to fix something that might be broken or, or whatever. And then any new development that we do going forward is, is usually done in Groovy Grails. Thanks so much for taking time to talk to me. This is really interesting. And, uh, and uh, let's do this again sometime. Absolutely, yeah.